expecting a little bit more sausage jokes, boys. You got your girthy and your wide, you got your long and skinny. I like getting compliments on my sausage. Hello, and welcome back to Beer and Back Again. Today, we're visiting Snackish Sausages, where owner and chef Tom is, well, to put it frankly, Jose, he's gonna show us how he packs his wieners. We hear they're cooking up some creative links using seasonal ingredients, beer, and even mac and cheese. Let's meet this real banger of a chef. Thanks for coming here, first of all, and giving Thanks us the opportunity to expose the, the fun of the sausage, because huh, sausage is a very underrated thing, I believe. So uh, yeah, welcome, and let's go for it. To give you a little bit of a backstory where snacks come from, uh, right in between the pandemic, the f stuff we all lived, huh? yeah. <laughs> we went to uh, Tofino and we were looking at the, at the ocean, me and my wife, and uh, well, what, what are we gonna do? Like, uh, we have to get a little bit more creative. And actually my wife drew a sausage in the sand and I said like, that's what we need to do. We need to start making sausages. <laughs> well, the funny thing is like, how we got to the name Snackish, like, like I said, like we draw something in the sand and it fit, fit it nicely. The main thing is like often at night when we watch television, I say to even my wife says, oh, <laughs> I feel snackish. Yeah. And what is snackish? And then we looked it up online and it has a bit of two different meanings. One is very uh, sexual. <laughs> so look it up once. And the other, <laughs> the other one is just like me, yeah, I want a snack. So we only work with, like I said, local farmers. It's all from the Fraser Valley. As of now, like we discovered a bit new, but it's a prime rose, primrose, I have to say, sorry. It's a conventional farm, but they only work, they work without antibiotics and added hormones. I'm a big believer, like I worked for a long time in the meat industry. Conventional farming is not the worst thing as long as it's good and you know what the farmer does. And sometimes conventional can also be good. Like we, ha we have to not forget that as a consumer. So that's why I'm provocating uh, antibiotic free and no added hormones and then know what the farmer does. It's really, really easy. That's my main philosophy on snack is, it has to be easy and Again, like what you buy, buy good stuff, what you stick in your mouth, it has to be delicious. Every step of the, of the way. So we use like a really basic salt, pepper, garlic base on the, on the meat. And then we go from there and make the, the funky stuff. So we do um, yeah, mac and cheese. That's basically one of our famous ones. Yeah, we're gonna see later more on how that works. And then we make one today. That's a bit like a special one, huh? Like we, we, de we decided. So it's gonna be um, foie gras. Uh, <laughs> Pinot de Charent. I mean, that, what it is, is like a fortified wine. So what we did, we um, soaked raisins for overnight, for like, let's say 12 hours in the Pinot de Charent. And then, so the, when you take a bite of the raisin, it's the Pinot de Charent with big chunks of uh, foie gras. Yeah. And then we put some um, pistachio nuts with there. So we, yes, yesterday, we yeah, peeled up all the, <laughs> yeah, that's it. And again, that's like, why is it craft sausages? You can never make a sausage with a big a sausage like this with a big machine you always need to mix it by hand take your time and make sure that the ingredients don't break because w no matter what if you use a big machine it's going to mess up all your structures and that's the fun of eating snack sausages you have to see the different kind of ingredients we put in so we're going to make mac and cheese yeah. uh, we're going to make a stout smoked ham hock so i the smoked ham hocks we braced for like five six hours in stout um, Cabbage, like I said, like but that's with the uh, braised cabbage, also with beer and bacon and thyme, and then the last one, uh, the foie gras pinot, uh, pinot de Chirin. That's amazing. My mouth yeah. is watering right now. That's good. <laughs> awesome. So shall we uh, see how the sausage is made? Yeah, yes. sure. Let's go in the back and uh, get started. Let's do it. So let's also very important to explain a little bit more about like how the meat we're using and what we're using. So this is the pork shoulder. We only use pork shoulder. Why do we use only pork shoulder? It has the most like marbling and it's just fatty. If you use too lean meat, too much lean meat in your sausage, it's gonna be super like not pleasant to eat. So that's why the reason why we only use shoulder. And then in the shoulder, it's really easy. As you see here, shoulder. This is like the neck, goes to the, here's the head. And this is the loin. So here's like your pork chops. And then you have two pieces in there. This is the butt in French is the chin. It's my favorite cut in the pork. I'm gonna show you something really nice. And that's why it explains why the pork shoulder is so good. Look all the marbling there. That makes the best sausage in there. And then for the, for the grind, it doesn't really matter, but we cut it like in cubes like that. And this stuff goes through the grinder. And we grind it only one time, so you have a nice coarse, coarse grind. 
that's also, again, like we talked about structure, it gives your sausage a lot of structure, so yeah, there you go. So I will do the mixing, so we have the, at least the recipe right there, eh? and then you guys can make uh, start making sausages. Like I said, it's no open, open, open heart surgery, it's super easy, uh, just pay attention, that's what it is. So for the mac and cheese, like I said, we have pork, cheese, macaroni, parsley, and uh, the bechamel mix we made earlier. So the trick is melt some butter, put your onion in, put your thyme in, there we go. And again, it's really like mama and papa cooking. Like it's not, we're not working in a Michelin star restaurant. It has to be super easy, everybody can do it. So. And that's the trick of a bechamel. Huh? It's butter, milk and uh, liquid and flour. So gluten-free, mm, not too much made of mac and cheese. <laughs> then the trick to give it a really good mac and cheese flavor, like the richness of the, of the mac and cheese, is smoked paprika. So this is your roux. It's very important with the mac and cheese that it's a thick bechamel. If it's too creamy, mix it with the cheese and the sausage and the sausage explodes real quick. So this is basically like your, how do you say that? Like your glue. A, yeah, your glue and your damper of explosion. Because always a sausage with a lot of cheese is bang. And then you're ready to go. That's your bechamel. So what I like to do, like I just pop everything in and then just mix it. I have a, this is the, like I said, the base. So it's a salt, pepper, garlic, and uh, oh, there you go. So there we go, makes sense. Then the deliciousness. Oh, that looks Look so at yummy. that. <laughs> <laughs> this is what the, vitamins for the winter. And cheese. Oh my goodness. That looks not, so good. We're not gonna cheap out on the cheese. But like I said, like why we, we put so much cheese and then if you put not that bechamel mix, it's gonna be like yeah. super soft when you cook it. Right, yeah, that makes sense. And then oh the my God. macaroni. I'm not gonna put everything yet, just in case. There we go. And of course, so when kids eat it, they think that they eat something green. And we're mixing it. Like I said, like we're making craft sausages. So as you see, like if you ask me, like how much of this is in there exactly? How much of that is in there? I'm gonna be honest, I don't know. <laughs> that brings it back as well. Like you can make these kind of sausages on like four or five hundred kilo batches. So yeah, that's the mac mix. Sorry, mac. Uh -huh, that's funny. Oh, oh, just that's amazing. Ah, oh, you just stuff it in there. So into one cylinder, into yeah, this, another. Exactly. <laughs> okay, now let's just cook this whole thing, and this is one big sausage, right? <laughs> yeah. So that's gonna be a bologna. Yeah. There we go. Ah. There it is. <laughs> there it is, the magic. One of the mo main, like, <laughs> grossed out things on sausages is where you put the sausage meat in, and that's the casing. We only use natural casing, and natural casing means nothing else than the intestines of a pig. Not a fun start. Should I do the first one, and then you guys? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Show, show us how it's done, you're the master. Show us how to stuff the meat. I was expecting a little bit more sausage joke, boys. <laughs> oh, we can go. Look at, the way, look at the way that you handle that casing. Yeah. It seems like you're a professional at this, Tom. Can you uh, tell us more about how you handle your meat every day? <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> Good one. <laughs> no, but as you see, like the, it's just make sure that there's not enough, not too much pressure in the casing. And then, uh, there you go. That's it. And then this is like your main, Casing, you guys are gonna do it after me. <laughs> yeah, this looks awesome. What Jose yeah. and I are about to do? Yeah, exactly. No, 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 no. So it's like this. Yeah. First it one, twist it. Yeah. And then the second one, I don't twist. And for me, it's also important that the sausage is big. No, not like cheap out. Is it? Like, right. Is it important the sausage is big? Very out? important. Size of the sausage matters. Exactly. Whatever they say, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Very incredible and mesmerizing technique from Tom. Again, it's not open heart surgery, it's super easy, okay. so I like to keep it easy. 
So here is the mac and cheese sausage. Brilliant. Who goes first? Right, I'll go first. Okay, okay, let's do it. Okay. So, so you take a casing. Take a casing. There we go. Yeah. So you can just pull it. Tougher, over. tougher than I. You can pull on the plastic thing. Pull on the plastic. The... Oh, I see. And it just slides off that way. Oh, that, that's brilliant. That makes a lot more sense. And then just pull this off. I'm gonna stay very polite here, huh? We just think about it, okay, boy? <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. And so then, like, some people make a little nut in the front, but yeah. you don't have to do it because you twist it anyways. Okay. All right. Just make sure that your first little push has like enough filling. Okay. All right. So. So you go for it. Yeah. This way. Yep. Yeah. I got you the feel right. the pressure. Yeah. Okay. Now hold it a little bit. Okay. Yeah. Hold it. Push it towards the stopper. Okay. See, you see there? Okay. And yeah. Now you hold the sausage like. Yeah. And I just like keep a going. Good sausage. Yeah. Oh, there yeah. you go. Oh, look at that. That makes sense. There you go. There we are. Professional, you're yeah. hired. I have a lot, huh? of, a lot of practice at home. This feels very natural. <laughs> oh, yeah, see. Getting a little big there. Is this looking good? Yeah, it looks good, yeah. I like getting compliments on my sausage. There you go. I popped here. Oh, did I pop? Yeah. And it okay. doesn't matter, it's all good. Okay. What we do then? Okay. Let me show you yeah. a little. Show me. Oops, sorry. We just pop it out. Okay. Like there. Uh -huh. And you continue. Okay, so Jose, before I get in there, tell me, what does this feel like? Uh, what, what, what are these textural feelings? It's cold. It's cold? <laughs> it's, uh, it's firm. <laughs> no, it, uh, it, it's, this is, uh, it, it feels like you, what you'd expect. Uh, it's awesome, you can see all those ingredients, those big chunks of mac and cheese and parsley. Uh, and the cheese. This looks like it's gonna be a really nice sausage. Okay, we're gonna see this. We spin okay. this. All right, I think that's that's. Uh, that's the next step. That's the next step. Okay, so, so because I popped it here, should yeah, I? Yeah, just pop just, it off. Just pinch it off here. Yeah. Okay. There we go. Okay, and I guess we can we can call that a sausage. Just be a, you could a baby <laughs> a baby sausage. Don't there say sausage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and then, then pinch it. Pin, pinch the space. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and then spin there it. There you go, spin it, twist it. There we go. There we good go. Enough? Yeah, yeah, good enough. Okay. Well, you want me to get right yeah, in yeah. here? Just kind of like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. it's like you're doing an awesome job. Thank you, Mac. I <laughs> appreciate that. Great. Awesome. There you go. That's awesome. You're a sausage maker now. I'm a sausage maker. Now. Yeah. Congratulations. <laughs> this is my Your first certificate. Will be printed soon. <laughs> That's great. So I've seen the professional. Yep. You definitely I've, seen uh, an amateur. I've seen uh, the amateur. Mm -hmm. We're gonna take my uh, skills. And we're gonna see how I hold up against uh, handling meat. It's gonna be a good day. Competition is on. <laughs> meat handling competition. Go. Okay. Now you have to keep your finger there so it doesn't go out. Yeah. Push a little bit towards the stopper. Whoop, whoop. Yeah. Give yourself some time. Yeah, there you go. And now you hold it there. Hold it like that. And then you feel the pressure. Oh, okay. I, okay, you I see? understand. I understand. You kind of just hold it at end. You don't want too much to escape out at once because there's a lot of pressure building up in the casing. Yeah, you can really feel the, the pressure build. Yeah. 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 Now you just let it go. Come on, boy. Get in there. <laughs> well, it's just like you said, the everybody, everybody's a little different. You got your, uh, you got your girthy and your wide. You got your long and skinny. <laughs> <laughs> it's so mesmerizing. Even the feeling in here is just, I don't know what to say. <laughs> think it's good? If you think it's good, I go have for it. no idea what I'm looking for for feeling here. It's all about the feeling, huh? Yeah. Okay, gotta get like. First one, I always do like that. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Like that. And then we made a puppy like that. Woo. Come on. Come on. Spin for me. Make a little bit more space. How you're handling your sausage. Yeah. Uh, I'm a, I'm a professional. Little, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a little awesome. aggressive. Do you feel pressure? <laughs> <laughs> I always like to start when I cook my sausage with a cold pan. You're not cooking a steak where you have to be like super precise with the cuisson inside. No, it's just it's gonna be delicious. Sorry, it's not so fast. Go this way. But it takes time. It takes time to do something right. Exactly. When you're cooking these guys, do you do anything else? You put a little bit of butter, a little bit of oil. Just and, oil. Just a little bit of yeah, oil. Yeah, cold that's pan it. and oil. Yeah. And then, of course, you can also choose to use butter. Yeah. Whatever you like. Okay, you're just really, you're really letting all those ingredients that you put into the sausage shine through this way. Yeah. Yeah. Go. 
one was yours and which one was with his, huh? <laughs> the big one or the small one? <laughs> I know, I know uh, Max is bigger than mine. <laughs> See, and that happens. It's actually fun that it happens now with the mac and cheese that you guys made. No, I'm joking. <laughs> but if you then twist it good, you see that there? Mm -hmm. That's what happens. It doesn't really matter. It's just not as sexy as a sausage can be, you know? <laughs> oh, look at it. Just like the cheese and the bechamel sauce just like starting to ooze out a little bit. Oh. Yeah, so what I'm doing now, like I just give it a little bit of color, pop them on the on the rack and then we finish them in the oven. This is the stout one. So the stout one, this is the this is the stout from Black Kettle. This has got the smoked ham hock. And what else was in this? Par a little bit of parsley. The big difference in this seek of this sausage is like with the cabbage, I don't have to put extra beer because the cabbage is all like it's drunken up by the beer. Up, yeah. yeah, exactly. And we pop this in the oven for like 10 minutes. There you go. So this is my favorite part. The aprons are off, <laughs> the hands are clean. We get to see what the sausage looked like cooked. We saw you preparing it in the pan. Um, let's let's dig in and try some. We start with the first one. That's the black gallo one. The, okay. We call it the black gallo one because that's the one on our menu. But that's um, braised cabbage um, in their pill ale, uh, thyme, bacon, and that's it. And then we have uh, the other ones start in the front there. That's gonna be the new one, braised smoked hammock and stout. And then in the middle, well, we just figured out the name ourselves, huh? Yeah. And the props to you. It's a le petit apéro. It's a foie gras, pinot de charan, the raisins, and then the one we saw, huh? And then one of the flagship ones, the mac and cheese. Mac and cheese. Yeah. And then uh, I guess we drink some beer with that then. There we go. So, you know, we've kind of got everything. And you were saying that your favorite part is at the end when we get to see the finished product. Yep. My favorite part is we get to eat. Let's do this. Let's <laughs> do it. Right. There okay, we go. So, so this, go for it. This is the, this is the, the pale ale? Pale ale one, yeah. Pale yeah. one. All right. So what kind of beer are we going to have with this then, Mac? You want to make go me for it, make, you go for make it. me make yeah I got I, I'm not gonna go make beer it. decisions right now this is food this is food online all right oh my god it is that mm. it's a doable oh wow that's delicious that's so good Tom huh? all right I see what you mean I, like again having the larger pieces of ingredients really makes it feel like you're eating a uh, like a meal and you know sausage yeah it's kind of like you said earlier the cabbage is like really drunk off that beer you get like you get that deep alcoholic taste mm -hmm. um you really get like the pork flavor coming through. It's so incredibly tender. I've had some nice sausages for sure in my time, but this is this is craft sausage. Also, what an amazing surprise. Foie gras. I was not expecting foie gras. You said you're gonna surprise us with an ingredient. And um, I thought, oh, I don't know, maybe he'll find some different type of beer or something like that. Yeah. But to know you came up with foie gras and and, uh, and how do you say that again? The uh, Pinot de Chéron. Pinot de Chéron. Yeah. You made a good uh, mac and cheese sauce, boys. Cheers, huh? Yeah. Salute. Cheers. Prost! Like Skull. we said. Skull. Skull. We've got two delicacies here. We've got the, the delicacy of just an awesome food, and I mean, it, these are also sins. It's the, yeah. sin of, it's the sin of alcohol, and it's the sin of just like gluttony. Yeah, there you go. And it's just, I love it. this was great. Honestly, Tom, yeah. thank yeah. you so much thank for today. So much. Thanks again. This Guys. was incredible. And like I say, the door is always open, so keep following us and we see where we, we see each other again in a couple of years. Huh? Excellent. Yeah. Sounds yeah, good. Yeah, for sure. So, thanks a lot. Next time you're feeling snackish, <laughs> look up snackish sausages. <laughs> Stick around, folks, and we'll see you next time. Cheers. Thank you. A journey through the darkness Through the deepest and the hardest I wear the scars like tattoos Every single break in blue So I know what the cost is I'll go through anything To get where I want Thanks.
So if you want